You always want to use what we call fudge factor. Fudge factor is basically what we call plus or minus. Plus or minus. Hold on a second. Plus or minus. So what that means is, again, we've been doing this long enough, right? Most of us, this isn't our first day in business. When you are that painter and you walk into somebody's house, you've been doing it for 30 years. You could, you could walk through the rooms, I'm telling you. 15 minutes, you know how much it is. 15 minutes, you'll be able to tell, right? You know how much wall prep you need. You pretty much know how much paint you need. You know how much time it's going to take. You, if it's a tall ceiling, you know the ladders you got to bring in. This isn't news to us. We do this every single day. And when you know the price, go back to this, you can never give your price in a vacuum, right? You need to make sure that they never see your price in a vacuum. You've got to be there on the phone, face-to-face, -face, Zoom, whatever. You never give your price in a vacuum. I like to give it very early. I gave you the example in the earlier illustration. You know, Mrs. Jones, I've been doing this a long time, and I've got to tell you, you're probably looking every bit $3,000. You know, you've got to give me maybe 5% fudge factor, a little more, a little less, and either way when we actually get into it, right? But you're probably looking in that 3,000 plus or minus, I don't know, 10%, right? So it could be 2,700, it could be 3,300, but that's where you're going to be. Should we keep talking? No, I haven't. I've had people say, well, could you do it in writing? I'm like, sure. 30, 3,000 plus or minus 10%. Here we go. Right? Now, I'm not doing that to be a smart ass. But I'm saying, no, what I'm saying is, what, if I give it to you in writing, why do you need it in writing? If I give it to you in writing, what are you likely going to do? People like things in writing for what reason? Sure, so they can share it, right? If I tell you something and you tell somebody else, well, that certainly doesn't seem legitimate, right? We call that hearsay in court. But if I write it down... Right? Exactly. That's evidence. Now, I'm not saying that you want to think of this relationship in this very combative way. Oh, by the way, thank you so much for the people on Facebook Live. Uh, shameless plug. Go to DonZavis.com, and you will learn some amazing stuff about how to be a better salesperson. Thank you so much. All right. So when you have that fudge fact, whatever that is, right, you do shirts. Somebody comes, I want 100 shirts. You say, you know what? You're probably, and I'm just making this up, by the way. You're probably looking probably $2,000, maybe give or take, you know, 10% depending on, you know, embroidery or screen or colors or types of styles. But you're probably going to be ready in that area, right? Because, again, if I'm not going to make a sale, when do I want to find out? Well, right away, right? Because if I know I'm going to be pretty close to 2,000 and, and they only have 1,000, well, when do I want to talk about that, right? If I said, well, you're probably looking at about 2,000, maybe, you know, 10%, a little fudge factor either way, depending on silk screening or whatever, and they say, oh, my God, we could never spend that much. Again, when do you want to find out? When do you want to know that? I encourage people that you're going to want to find that out pretty early in the game, right? Because if I'm not going to make a sale, when do I? And again, since you're saying this when you're face to face with them, you can read a lot of the body language, right? When the person kind of gulps hard, it's like, wow. Okay, well, that's not a person that's happy about what they heard, right? When that person goes, Oh, man, right? There's nothing, nothing good happens on the other side of this. <sighs> right? This is when it's good. Really? Right? You hear really? You might have something. Right? Fudge factor. And again, this is the art as well as the science. So, by the way, this is all could potentially be the same number. Whatever number that we come up with on this line, all these things are applicable. Bad price, old price, you never let them see the number. You make the sale that can be made. We figure out a way to make them on fire. We talk about the idea of having that fudge factor, having a little bit of leeway going on either side. Again, but the price, the actual number, doesn't. we figure out the number here. Once we figure out the number, that's where it stays. Right? Again, you cannot discount your way to prosperity. Now, most people, when they come up with pricing, Unfortunately, they get enamored, right, uh, that somebody comes in and they're like, well, listen, if you do a good job on, you know, painting this room, we're thinking about painting our, uh, the rest of our, you know, 9,000 square foot house, right? And you as the painter get all excited, like, ooh, right, I'm going to, you know, I'm going to take, I'm going to take it in the shorts now in this one room for the opportunity to do this other room, right? Don't you think that the buyers know that? Don't you think they know that? Don't you think that smart people have learned what to say so that all the dumb salespeople in the world get taken advantage of? The people that laugh the hardest, by the way, are the ones that have had it done to them, right?